Hi everyone, my name is Chuck Jacobs. I'm 73 and I've lived here in Payson for uh, just short of 52 years and I'm a squatcher. The, uh, the Muggy on Monster legend began in 1944 or 45, the accounts differ. Uh, there was a group of Boy Scouts that were uh, hiking into a remote canyon area about 15 miles east of Payson. And during the night, uh, they were terrorized by a, a large, bipedal, hair-covered, foul-smelling creature that uh, came into their camp uh, roaring and screaming and scared them all to death. Didn't hurt any of them, ate their food. Uh, they were all bundled up in sleeping bags and afraid to move. So as soon as it got light enough the next morning, they packed up and got out of there. When they told the locals what had happened, uh, there, there was not a name at that time. The term Bigfoot hadn't been invented yet, and uh, they were nobody here knew anything about the term Sasquatch. And so they needed a name for the creature, so they called it the Mugion Monster, after the local Mugion Rim. I was a fire chief for actually 31 years at chief officer level. Fire chief basically is the guy in charge of the fire department. He's the boss. He's the one that runs the whole organization. Around 19, or excuse me, 2011, uh, the show Finding Bigfoot came out. And watching that show, I kind of got interested in the subject matter. I'd always been interested in fringy subjects my whole life, things like UFOs and ghosts and that sort of thing. And so I started uh, investigating the BFRO on their, on their website. The BFRO is the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, and it's the largest organization of its type in North America and probably the world. And they study the, the Bigfoot phenomenon and uh, became a member in 2013 and was uh, appointed as a field investigator, a volunteer field investigator, and I've been working with them ever since. Well, there are two entirely different camps, if you will, among the Bigfoot enthusiasts. Now, one camp b uh, believes that these are some type of an undiscovered ape, uh, strictly a flesh and blood type creature. Then there's another very distinct group that, uh, that believe that the Sasquatch are more than just a creature, that they're some type of a people and that they have paranormal, or maybe the better term is extra normal abilities. That side of the fence is, is referred to often as the woo. And the only thing the two camps can readily agree on is the fact that, that the Sasquatches are real. I've always been kind of on the scientific side and as I've gotten a little bit older, I've started uh, experimenting a little bit more with my spiritual sides. I'm kind of a behind the scenes guy and I like to, I like to understand how things work. I've been doing this for 11 years and uh, I've had a number of sightings and quite a number of encounters. Uh, the most recent one that comes to mind was two summers ago. My partner and I were at one of our research locations and we had one walk by in front of us about 120 feet away. It was about seven feet tall, thin build, and we both saw it very clearly and actually had interaction with it. Uh, during the uh, spring and summer and fall, uh, we get out as often as we can, a number of times a year. Uh, we don't go out during the winter because it's, uh, it's cold out there. We have a number of research locations. Most of them are up on the, uh, the Mugion Rim, north and east of where we live. And then we have another one that's uh, located quite a ways to the southeast. We have nicknames for all of our spots that we go, and we've had uh, incredible experiences in all of them. One particular one that we go to frequently, we've nicknamed Crazy Town because of all the things that have happened there. We've got a lot of audio. I have pictures of evidence, I have pictures of footprints, so that type of thing. The forest people, as we like to call them, uh, they, for whatever their reasoning is, that is, they do not like cameras. And they will not come around if you try to take their picture, which is obviously the reason why more pictures don't exist. My name is Kevin Keeney. I live in Strawberry, Arizona. I'm 52 years old. I was in the United States Army for right about five years till I was injured in Operation Desert Storm and was medically discharged after that. Currently, I am now retired and I spend my time researching and running my YouTube channel, Arizona Squatch. And I am more of a spiritual person, but I also follow the scientific side of things and I have to be analytical about everything that I experience. But for the most part, I am more spiritual. My first experience was about 1982 with the Boy Scouts. We were backpacking along the bottom of the Mogollon Rim and sitting by the campfire, we had a large boulder that was thrown at us. Um, 
got hit right behind the tree that I was sitting against. We all jumped up, threw all the wood on the fire, and was screaming at the scout leaders. Scout leaders at that point didn't hear anything, and they told us to go back to sleep. And that's when they heard the tree get snapped. And they're like, holy crap, one of them discharged a 44 Magnum in the air. And whatever it was, took off running through the trees, sounding like an elephant, and then it let out this, Whoa! There was no way we were going to bed after what we'd experienced. My most recent real life experience out with them was I had a communication from them where I was given the name Hayata. And that's as close as I can get to it. And I was told that I had to find what that meant. I contacted a friend of mine who is a Navajo Indian and what he told me and the best I can say it is Hayata. Uh, meant somebody who is out seeking. Uh, if it was given as a name, it's a searcher or a scout. I do have uh, physical evidence. I have photographs of footprints. I have photographs of face print that was left on my wife's truck. I have countless hours of audio recordings. One of the best ones is they're saying, hit to sue. We're not trying to prove to anybody that they're real. We know they're real. Uh, we are trying to develop a relationship and to learn about them. Anybody who's skeptical about all this, I ask that you keep an open mind. A phrase that I have coined is, do not let your paradigm dictate your experience, but let your experience dictate your paradigm. I met Chuck in 2017 when I filed my report with the BFRO. He was one of the field investigators in the state of Arizona. And I went up and met at the site with Kevin, and for some reason he and I just clicked as friends, and, uh, and we've been uh, researching together now ever since. I don't really believe it's a question between science and spiritual. I think there could be a scientific explanation on both sides. There is a spiritual component that we're discovering. But uh, the, the main the main discussion is that there's you know there's some very very strong personalities involved in this and and uh, both sides kind of feel that they're right. <laughs>